Okay, so this is my Acer Chromebook R11, and I've had this a while, and I've done several videos on it. Um, but I wanted to do a video with this HDMI capture device uh, because it is it is an amazing device. I did a video on this the other day, uh, running on my M1 Mac using a Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, but I thought today I would try my Raspberry Pi 400 uh, because it's got a keyboard already integrated into it. I thought I would plug that into my Chromebook uh, using this HDMI adapter. And uh, I'm just going to switch over to screen capture to show you the Chromebook a little bit more. Okay, so I bought this Chromebook back in April 2019, and uh, it was £135, so really reasonable at the time, from CEX, uh, so secondhand, but uh, it came with a two-year guarantee, and, it, and I've been really pleased with it. I, I bought a Chromebook because they were adding the Android apps, and I figured I, I really just wanted to try out uh, Chrome OS, because I'd never owned a Chromebook. I'd used them before, but never owned one, and actually, for the money, they are very decent. So let's click on the Chrome browser and show you that I've done several videos on it, adding games controllers. I've tried seven different games controllers. I've done Roblox. I've even set up the Raspberry Pi 4 uh, with a Chromebook. And also I've done a video on loads of emulators as well. One video I haven't done is uh, Linux on it. I was going to do it ages ago and I just never got around to it. But I'll just very quickly show, because it, it runs Linux. Uh, it was something that you can enable in the settings. I've got a folder with various things that I just tried to install as you would on a Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, so Xmoto, Mednaf, which is a multi-emulator, SuperTux 2, Extreme Tux Racing, and there's Terminal. So something like Xmoto, just to show it quickly. So you can see at the bottom, it's launching Linux within Chrome OS. But you can switch in between the systems, so when it's launched, you can still multitask with it. And you can see that it opens up in a window. Uh, so if I click on levels and just open anything. Here we go. So as you can see, it works nicely, very responsive, no issue with that. And let's go for Extreme Tux Racer, maybe something that looks a bit better. There you go, and you can see that uh, it looks pretty decent really. It runs nice and smoothly and uh, it was unexpected for me because it's, uh, it's running Linux from within Chrome OS and you can still run the Android apps beside it as well. So let's quit out of that and just quickly show the terminal. And all I did a while back was I was just uh, doing what I would normally do in fact. Oh, there you go. So sudo apt install Belena Etcher. I was trying all sorts of things on there, Xmoto. Uh, I don't know if NeoFetch works on this. Let's have a look and see if that. Oh, so it's, so it's already on there. So I must have installed that already. There you go. And so it shows you a bit about it. Anyway, let's get on with the screen capture bit. But I figured I, I wanted to do that and I didn't, I didn't think I would do it in the whole video. Uh, but I wanted to show it running Linux apps and, and various things had been working on it. And I, and I was really impressed with it. Okay, so let's get back to the screen capture bit. Uh, so this is the HDMI video capture. Uh, I've not got anything plugged into this uh, at the moment, so uh, it's running on battery power. Uh, so I can plug that USB adapter in. And it's weird because I, I was Googling this because I, I was going to try and use the Android side of it to get this to work. And uh, I Googled it and I found a load of forum posts that said, oh, no, it doesn't work or anything like that. So I just plugged it in and thought, oh, I'll have a go. So I typed in camera. Uh, and clicked on the camera, and you can obviously see my ceiling there. Uh, if I click on this one, this switches cameras, that's it. That's all you have to do. Uh, and I'll go over to screen capture to show a bit more of the setup. But uh, it literally is just switching to the uh, secondary camera. No drivers, no setup. I, I've literally plugged it in, pressed that uh, switch cameras button, and that's it. It is ready to go. So we need to power the Pi, but we also need a bit of HDMI. I probably wouldn't plug this in with it in there normally, but for the video it probably works better. Uh, so let's get my Pi 400 and let's plug the HDMI in. There you go, so you can see that's plugged in now. I've also got this cable, which is a USB-A to micro USB with a USB-C adapter on the end as well. Uh, so let's plug that into another USB socket and plug this into the USB-C on the Pi 400. 
and it should start to boot up. I've not put an SD card in. I found more success if you don't initially start with an SD card in, but then pop it in afterwards. Now, I'm probably gonna to switch to screen capture for this bit because uh, there's a few things I need to do on the Chromebook display. So let's plug in an HDMI cable. Well, this is a bit tricky. It's not quite, it's a super short cable for convenience for my Pi. Is that gonna switch itself on? Yeah, so you can see it's come up on the monitor behind it now. So let's switch over to screen capture. Okay, so the things I need to change on the screen are, you can see on the left here, uh, there's a mirroring button. So if I click that, you can see everything's the right way around now. The reason it's mirroring is with webcams, uh, they always show a mirror image of you because it's quite disconcerting if you're not looking at a mirror image of yourself. But obviously if I'm using an operating system through it, I want to be able to read it and I want it to respond exactly as it does. This just puts a grid on it. I don't need that. Uh, and I can't remember what this one is. Oh, it's a timer to take a photo, obviously. So that is all we need to do, really. Now, I have changed this because the device will go to uh, 1920 by 1080, but because this is a 768 display, uh, it doesn't look as good as that. And I've also resized the operating system on the Pi uh, to run at 720 because that obviously matches closer to the screen. And I found that it works pretty well. So let's click there to get rid of that. And I'm gonna switch cameras again. This is getting really confusing. So just before I put the SD card in, just to reiterate how it's set up. So it's the Chromebook Acer R11. It's running on battery power. I've plugged the USB adapter into the Acer, so it's taking its power from the Acer. But also the Pi 400 is also being powered by the Acer laptop on battery power. You can use this on mains if you want as well, uh, but I just wanted to show it as a portable solution. Uh, now, if I plug in the SD card, and there is a better way of doing this as a setup uh, because we don't need the keyboard on the Chromebook, so I can use the, the tent mode, but I'll show that in a minute. So you can see that it's starting up now. I've put the SD card in and it will boot Raspberry Pi OS, but any system works because really, this is just taking an HDMI output from the Pi. There you go, so that started up. So if I grab my mouse for the Pi, you can see that it's actually pretty responsive. I was, I was impressed as to how well this runs. Uh, and it looks reasonably sharp. I mean, it's not the best display uh, because of going through the capture card and everything like that, but I'm pretty impressed overall. Now I'm gonna switch over to the Pi 400 on native screen capture to show this bit because I wanted to show a few things that I changed on the Pi 400 just to make this system run a bit better. Okay, so the two things I changed were uh, the resolution of the screen. So I went into screen configuration and clicked on configure, screens, HDMI 1, resolution, and I dropped it down to 720 to more closely match the Acer Chromebook resolution. But I also have undervolted and underclocked this operating system. So if I go into terminal and go to the config.txt, you'll see here the settings I've added over underscore voltage equals minus four. So it's using less power, but also arm frequency is a thousand. So it doesn't go over a thousand. Now I haven't really played around with this um, to see whether I needed to do that. I, I figure it probably would still work, but I'm wondering if it would, uh, if I'm overclocking or running at standard clock speed, it's gonna take more power from the Acer Chromebook and that might lead to there being problems. But you could play around with this if you were using it and see how you get on. Uh, so if I click on the bottom here, you can see it's at 600 at the moment, but if I was to launch the Chrome browser and then hover over here, uh, you see it goes up to 1000, but it won't go any higher than that. Now this is video running at 1000 megahertz maximum uh, on 720 resolution and actually, well it's even toggled itself down to 700 and it's still coping with that. Uh, I was surprised at how well that worked. Anyway, let's have a look at the Acer on the camera and show a bit of gaming on it. So definitely the more convenient way to set this up will be in tent mode because of the keyboard. So if I flip this around, you can see that it sits like that. And then if I bring in the Pi 400, you can see that's much more convenient. I don't know if my cable's gonna reach. Uh, so let's have a look. So the power cable, so that's plugged in the USB-C. Oh, it's a bit tight. Obviously you can use a longer cable for this. Uh, and then the uh, USB 
plugs in other way around and is this going to be oh it's going to be short i suppose that makes it neater there you go so you can see the setup can be like that uh, and then we've got our mouse we've got our keyboard and everything's going to work on that uh, let's just oh it's just oh the cable is is uh, launching the touchscreen yeah i'm going to have to go with i'm going to have to go with longer cables for this so let's pull up from the bottom uh, and we can launch we need the camera app but it will give us the on screen keyboard camera app now Okay, so the cables were too short. So what I've done is just got a normal USB-A to USB-C cable, and I've also got a micro HDMI to HDMI socket and a long HDMI cable, which goes all the way around here and then goes back in. Uh, so uh, let's have a look at how well it runs games. Let's pop the SD card in. And for games, I'm going to need to use my Xbox controller. This is a wireless xbox 360 controller it's an unofficial one i'll put a link in the description but it comes with a dongle and the good thing about that is it's just the xbox 360 controllers are really compatible uh, with the raspberry pi so raspberry pi 4 raspberry pi 400 they just pretty much every game works with it and it's very very straightforward no messing about and it pairs straight away when the operating system's up and running So I'm going to leave it out at this distance for the moment, but I'll go in a bit closer to the screen in a minute. So if I launch some games, so I've got on here, I've got PPSS PP emulator and also Super Mario 64. Both of them came through PyKiss, uh, and if you don't know about PyKiss, it's definitely worth looking at. Uh, if I want sound, I would need to use... Uh, a Bluetooth speaker because the Pi 400 doesn't have any sound output at all. Uh, it can out output through the HDMI, but with this camera method, it's not capturing the sound. So if I just paired the Pi to a Bluetooth speaker uh, or Bluetooth headphones, then that would work fine. So let's just skip through these menus because the, the menus start a while. Well, if I move around, you can see how responsive Actually, that shows it really quite nicely how responsive it is. Um, but I'll play a bit of the game as well. Okay, so let's just show you it moving around. So we go left and right and jump. That was a big jump, wasn't it? Left, right. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, so jump and what's the slide one? That one. Oh. I only seen the building. So you can see that it, it feels pretty responsive. Uh, I was playing this a bit yesterday and uh, I was actually surprised at how well it felt. And uh, I wasn't that conscious of input lag. There must be some there, but I wasn't that conscious of it. I'm more conscious when I'm in the operating system and I'm using the mouse. So let's quit out of that and launch PPSSPP. So games, PPSSPP. You can see that it's not lagging too badly because I wouldn't be able to select the game as, as quickly as I did. So motocross versus ATV, which is quite a nice game to play. Can I get this full screen? Might not run as well. Again, this is running at 1000 megahertz, so this is the restricted power and restricted uh, processor. But when I tried this yesterday, it felt lovely and smooth. I'm standing off to a bit of an angle, so it's a bit odd to, to play. And let's move it in a bit so you can see just the screen. You don't really need to see the controller for this bit. Actually, let's pair sound. It's going to be nicer if I have some sound paired to it. So I'm going to, I'm going to turn on my Bose speaker and pair that. Let's get a Bluetooth, add device, and let's select the audio down here. Bose Connected speak. to Blake's video desktop. And we're up and running. Okay, so let's get rid of all the music and accept that. <laughs> nice start. Yeah, that's playable. I would, oh, nice. Uh, it does seem to be reasonably responsive. I don't. I think. I think with anything like that, if you get a bit of input lag, I mean, it's not as ideal as having it on a on a genuine monitor. 
but if you get a bit of input lag what you tend to do is just start to adjust to that input lag um, I mean it's not not as good on really competitive games and I wouldn't suggest this mainly for gaming but if this is your only option then uh, it's better than nothing nice landing let's just see if we can take these guys on this corner oh a bit tight <laughs> anyway let's uh, let's quit out of that and uh, let's go back into the video bit and show it showing on the screen because I got quite a lot of tearing on video on my MacBook uh, but then that was running probably at a much higher resolution certainly the, the screen was running at a much higher resolution but let's go into YouTube and uh, show a bit of my HDR video so Lee PSP video HDR let's click on that yeah that's looking pretty smooth let's go full screen Yeah, I'm happy with that. That's uh, that's pretty good. Okay, so I thought I'd better show it running also with a Pi 4. So here's my Pi 4. I'm uh, running the HDMI cable goes all the way around here and into the adapter. Uh, but it's all again being powered from the Acer Chromebook. Uh, and then I've got the output here going from USB-A to USB-C into the Pi. I've got a keyboard dongle because I'm using my Logitech keyboard. And just to show you, if I do Control alt and Delete, that comes up. Uh, if I do Control alt t to open a terminal and put in NeoFetch because I don't know which Pi this is. Yeah, so this is a Pi 4 4 gig model. If I go in a bit closer, you'll be able to see. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.